Namaste. I'm Rishabh and in this episode we will be going through the top 3 books that I have read as far as Indian classical music is concerned. Now keep in mind that these books have nothing to do with the theoretical aspect of Indian classical music and that's the purpose of this channel. We are honestly not here to learn how to perform or deal extensively into the theory. What we do here as I'd like to think at least, we try and acquire and delve into multiple aspects which will help enhance our understanding and listening of the art form that is Indian classical music. So these books could be autobiographies, biographies or books which just generally deal with you know multiple gharanas or multiple artists in one go. So again, these are not theoretical books and books which even a beginner can read, anyone can read. So let's get into it. One of the books which I am really fond of is a book on Pandit Malikarjun Mansur called The Ras Yatra, My Journey in Music. If you see the thickness of this book, it's a very thin book. It's one of the most enlightening books. Enlightening in the sense it gives a perspective on how much these great musicians, these top-notch musicians have to work in order to reach that top notch. Pandit Malikarjun Mansur, for people who don't know, was an artist one of the foremost artists of the 20th century and belonged mainly to the Jaipur Atroli Gharana. He was known for singing extremely rare rags. If you would like to hear recordings of these rare rags sung by Pandit Malikarjan Mansur, I'll put up a link in the description box below. And all the simple elements that we've learned till now are applicable to those recordings too. Pandit Malikarjan Mansur was also known for being trained by heavyweights of his time and of all time, especially Ustad Manji Khan and Ustad Bhurji Khan who were the sons of Ustad Alladiya Khan. The book was originally written in Kannad, which is a South Indian language, and was later translated into English by his very son, Pandit Raj Shekhar Mansur. Pandit Malikarjun Mansur was one of the simplest artists of his time, and he did not care about the money that he was getting or the accolade that he was getting from performing in concerts. And famously, he used to say that it doesn't matter if he was playing for the simplest of audiences or maybe the most advanced learned audience. He always used to give the performance his 100%. So it was never ever like he was dumbing down or watering down his performance for, you know, maybe a beginner audience. So an amalgamation of all these great factors put this book in my top three. The next book is a wonderful, wonderful book which I have mentioned on this channel before. I will put up a link of the video here and the book is called The Music Room by Mrs. Namita Devi Dayal. Now this book which I have right over here is truly one of my favorites primarily because you really don't need to be an Indian classical enthusiast or a beginner, intermediate, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. Even if you do not know anything about this form of music or you're not even interested, you can still read this book. It's that good. Through the lens of Namita Devi Dayal, who was one of her students and she was 10 when she went to her for the first time. And Dhondu Taikul Karni, as I've mentioned before, was the foremost disciple and was again a direct disciple of Surshri Kesar Bhai Kevkar, who, as you may know, is the queen of Indian classical music, who was from the 20th century. Dhondu Thai, at a point in the book, does say that she sees a reflection of a guru, Surshri Kesar Bhai Kevkar, in young Namita. But the book explores if Namita has the dedication to truly stick to her riyas and become a great, great singer. I honestly love this book. If you want to just start reading something about Indian classical music, this is the book that you have to start reading ASAP. Let's move on to the next one. Now I have saved the best book for the last and that is because if you are a person who has already begun his journey in the world of Indian classical music, that means that this music, this wonderful music has slowly started to trap you in its net, in a good sense of course. The next book is a book called The Lost World of Hindustani Classical Music by Kumar Prasad Mukherjee. Now I have kept this book at number one because this book single-handedly encompasses the foundation and the stories and the history of various gharanas ranging from Kirana to Patiala to Agra to Jaipur to Gwalior and also at the same time deals with many many artists from these gharanas especially all the Khan Sahibs and the Pandit Ji's and the Buas whose music as he says may have been inspired by the divine. This is honestly one of the top reads according to me because I fondly remember one anecdote in which the author himself is present and that is when the author was young. Now I of course don't remember the story by heart and you maybe are free to go and check out this book and see the story for yourself. But to the best of my recollection, Kumar Prasad Mukherjee, a young Kumar 
of maybe 9 10 years of age goes to a concert whose concert ustad abdul karim khan sahib and he when he enters the venue he sees that khan sahib is sitting on stage and his mouth is open ah but he does not really hear any sound coming from khan sahib's mouth and he is young kumar is quite perplexed as as to why is this happening he can hear the sarangi playing he can hear the tanpuras playing but he cannot hear Khan Sahib's voice and I think it was only later he realized himself or he was made to realize by his father but it was later that he realized that Khan Sahib's voice was on the upper sa or the tar saptak sharaj anyway it does not matter what note he was singing the note that he was singing was so in tune with the sarangi and the two tanpuras playing behind him that it all came out as one compound unit he the young kumar could not distinguish separately khan sahib's voice from the two tanpuras or the sarangi he was so much in tune and this is one of the multiple reasons ustad abdul karim khan sahib is known as a sadhak or a sadhu or a saint because his music truly was no longer for the audience it was for god these multiple stories are also subtly fused with the author's life himself the author is himself a vocalist and his direct interaction with many of these artists hence for me this book right over here is at number 1 anyway i hope you liked the recommendation of the books i really hope that you go and check out and buy at least one of these books and give them a good read because it would really enhance your understanding of the indian classical music world in general so that was it for this episode and i'll see you in the next episode and till then namaste